Hey everybody and welcome to Epic Every Day, our weekday podcast for busy, overwhelmed Christians who want to stop being busy and overwhelmed and instead move into freedom and abundance and peace. I'm Liz Ferrigs and this person right here is my husband, Evan. Hello there. (laughs) It's fun to try to make you laugh during the intro. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Well, hopefully it is uh, entertaining for you guys. (laughs) Yes. And not like, oh, just get to the point. Anyway, as you guys know, we work our way through the CSCs. They are being calm, surrendered, centered, connected, and complete. And since it's Tuesday, we're going to talk about surrender. Yeah. One of our favorite topics. Well, they all are, aren't they? Yes, (laughs) they all all are. Yeah. But this week, we are talking about one of my very favorite topics, the topic of hell. Do you want to say why? (laughs) Well, (laughs) we'll we'll get into it, I think. Yeah, we could talk about that. So one of the things I was thinking about with surrender and health is that when we're not surrendering to God's plan and the way God designed our bodies to work, it adds to a lot of our stress. Yeah. Like... It's very overwhelming. Yeah, and we may not even know what, that that's what we're doing. We're pushing right. against this this force of nature that just is the way our bodies work and the right. way our environment works. Yeah, like we're all, you know, we talked about yesterday that idea of how we're all trying to get by on less sleep than we need. We actually were just start talking about that before we started recording because we challenged we each other didn't get to enough go to bed early tonight. Night. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it just makes sense mm-hmm. that. God is our designer has a certain idea about, well, not an idea. There is a way that our bodies work right? And, and the way we move through the world. And I think it's, that's knowable. I don't, you know, some of it is intuitive, like eating actual real food and stuff yes. like that instead of Chemicals. stuff that came out of a box. Um, and yet some of it people I think never think about. Well, I know I didn't. I mean, that's how we got into natural health was because when we, when I was pregnant with our first daughter, um, my OB said, eat whatever you want. And the baby can totally get whatever nutrients that it needs to get out of your body. That's the thing, right? Eating for two, so just pig out, right? And Well, it wasn't even that. Like, it was just like... And, well, and I struggled so much. I had so much morning sickness that I lost tons of weight. But um, it was more just don't worry about it. Drink coffee if you want or, you know, like like it didn't matter what I ate. If I wanted to eat McDonald's every day, go for it. You specifically you know? asked her and she was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, well, I was like, do I need to change my diet at all or anything? And she was like, no, you're fine, yeah. you know. And it was this like, okay. I I I guess that must be true, you know. Yeah. We're building a brand new person here, but I guess who cares what the materials are? <laughs> well, I mean, I think that is a prevailing belief that yeah. the baby can get whatever mm. it needs out of the mother's body. But um, it wasn't until after we had our oldest and had a crazy, insane birth experience with her. And we're, you know, swore afterwards we were never having another kid in a hospital. Ended up with an unnecessary C-section and all kinds of Lots stuff. Lots of stress and tears and trauma. And yes. It was very it was emotional. Awful. Yeah. But um, so then we, when we got pregnant with our second daughter, we decided we would have her at a birth center. And when we went to the birth center, they were like, okay, here's a diet to prevent preeclampsia. And I was like, wait, what? I thought I could eat McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean I need to go on this diet? And that was part of the deal. You had to sign a statement saying that you would follow the diet if you were going to be treated by the birth center. Yeah. And it was this revolutionary, like, nutrition matters more than just a general, you probably shouldn't eat fast food all the time. Yeah. I think it was extra stressful going back to the first pregnancy because right at the end, like, wasn't it, you only had one month left or two months Mm -hmm. and we read, uh, what was that book? Ina May's Guide to Natural Childbirth. Yeah. And then Mm -hmm. it was just like, wait a minute, what? This is how this works? And this is, and then we tried to change some things last minute and it just. 
it didn't it work was, very well. It would have still been stressful, I think. Although, so download a whole bunch of new knowledge and then still like feel like you don't have any other option but to go to the hospital and do whatever the doctor says and then end up having this well, major surgery. Right. And I think we wouldn't have known any better before. Like we would have just been like, oh, well, we need a C-section. Oh, goes. well. Yeah. Instead yeah. of being like, oh, my gosh, this is totally an unnecessary C-section. This is, you know, the, the then, cascade of interventions and being yeah. like, ah. But in the middle of it, it's like no way to get out. Right. I mean, after a certain point. Yeah. Especially after they break your water. There's like no coming back from that. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. I so we're, we're going to use that as an example in today's show of common knowledge or common sense. And I think we mentioned that yesterday, but how it's not always right. It's, it's, um, so I'm going to try to make this distinction between the way things are, which is the way God's world is, right? God made things the way they are. Mm-hmm. And that's the truth. Common sense is the way that they've become somehow. We've, mm. we've. Well, the way that we think <clears throat> they are. Because it's sure. not necessarily even, I mean, like with that example, you know, the way things are, God designed a woman's body to give birth. That's right. But common sense is, oh my gosh, we need to measure you. Are your hips wide enough to birth a child? I'm not really sure. We probably should induce early. Go ahead early. and eat McDonald's, but then when you go into labor, don't eat it at all just in case we have to do surgery. Right. And don't walk around. Like, yeah, that's the way things have become. In our wisdom and in our shaping of society and, you know, our smarts and we're so much more genius than, than God is. Or, you know, God's, if you're totally evolutionary, God's out of the picture anyway. So, but yeah, that's the way things have become this. And that's common sense. And right. fighting against that is always going to be an uphill battle. But, I mean, if you have to pick between fighting against common sense and fighting against the way things are... I would much rather fight common sense. Oh, yeah. Like, totally. Yeah, it's a noble fight. Well, and just even from a practical standpoint, you know, yes, if you're fighting against common sense, it takes a lot of energy, but you get results when you're aligning with the way God designed your body to work. If you're fighting against the way God designed your body to work, it takes a lot of energy and you don't get positive results. Yeah. I mean, one of the big results, so coming back to these stories we're telling is, so you had a cesarean with your first, and everybody in common sense world says, once you've had one cesarean, you always have a cesarean. There's no way right. to have a normal birth after that. And you had a normal birth. Yeah. And, uh, you know, common sense is like, that's dangerous. You're, that's an unnecessary risk. And in our mind, it's an unnecessary risk to go back to the hospital <laughs> to have a baby. Yeah, um, definitely. One thing I wanted to share to show this split between God's world the way things are and the way things have become is the statistic from the economist and i'm sure you could find it other places as well but they were just looking at the last few years so from 2009 to 2013 the maternal mortality rate in the united states has gone up and it seemed like significantly whereas mm-hmm. in asia and europe yeah. and other developed countries it's been going down the whole time well yeah and that statistic, that's been happening since the 90s, where it's been the U.S. <clears throat> mortality rate keeps going up and everywhere else it's going down because we're intervening more yeah. and more and more. We're um, messing around with a process that works pretty great. <laughs> yeah. I really love Ricky Lake's documentary on birth. Um, the business of being born. I yes. was going to mention that too. Yeah. So it is a fight. It's a fight against common sense. Um, and it's a fight against our culture. I mean, how many movies does the, when a woman goes into labor, does she start screaming her head off and the ambulance comes? And it's just this whole thing. Like they talk about that in the business of being born, how it really can be this quiet, beautiful, pleasurable thing. Right. And we just inject all of this fear and panic into it. Mm-hmm. And like we were talking about yesterday, <laughs> when is injecting fear and, and panic ever help? Right. Yeah, and that's not, I mean, obviously, that is one area of life where you can see the difference between common sense and the way things are. But there are loads of areas with health. I mean, we could talk about cancer oh, yeah. and, you know, the Journal of Oncologists, the 2004 Journal of Con- Oncologists um, talked about how there is only a 2.1% survival rate from chemo after five years. So if, 
it's one of those things. Everybody, you have cancer, go get chemo. Except when you look at the results, it's like, wait a minute, is this really what we want to do? Mm-hmm. Or you could talk about. Um, or it's only pre- that's it's that's the only option. Chemo and radiation is like that's the treatment for cancer. Right. But then all the while, we're raising money to find a cure for cancer. Right. So the it's not a like we solve this. Here's what you do. You do chemo and you get radiation. But at the same time, that's the only option. Whereas right. I thought we were all doing research on how to treat cancer. Yeah. So are there a lot of w- things I could try here to solve this problem or or not? Right. And you don't, like the culture is like, well, just, just do the chemo. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, it's really interesting when you start looking at, you know, natural health versus allopathic medicine, like normal Western medicine, which... I love that we have normal Western medicine. I mean, there are tons of things about Western medicine that I'm all for. Using it for trauma. I mean, there are... The ER, yeah, those doctors are putting people back together after car accidents. Right. Excellent. Yeah. So there are definitely things. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's lots of places where we've found, you know, for instance, with autoimmune disease, the way that normal Western medicine treats the problem is, well, let's suppress the immune system. Whereas natural health is like, whoa, there's a problem with the immune system. How do we heal the immune system? And so, you know, in Western medicine, you're stuck in this perpetual fight against your immune system. You know, you suppress it, it fights back harder. You suppress it more, it fights back harder. And meanwhile, there's side effects to all these drugs that are suppressing it. And your body always has a weakened immune system because you've been beating it down. Right. Versus and that's probably the what, natural health is right. totally different. Yeah, and one so we're looking at the same situation. Like there's something wrong with the immune system. It's attacking my body. Right. So let's attack the immune system. That's common sense. Or let's strengthen the immune system so it can actually start to work the way it's supposed to. Right. It's ob- there's something wrong. It's not working right. So let's try to heal it so it starts working right. Right, which is the route that we went, you know, with my autoimmune junk. And as I've said before on the show, I used to be in a wheelchair, so it's a pretty major difference. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, you know, as you guys, especially as we're coming into Thanksgiving and a lot of people have this idea that like they should not eat the week before Thanksgiving and then they should eat a ton on Thanksgiving or they should, Or don't worry about it. Pig out until February and then start worrying about bathing suit season and diet like crazy. Like, right. Who, it's a bunch of crazy stuff. <laughs> right. Yes. There, And it's so interesting, you know, um, if you make food with real stuff, like real fats, real sugars, all that kind of stuff. Ingredients that, yeah, either came from a plant or an animal that God made pretty directly. Right. Anything you can make in your very own kitchen, pretty much. Yeah. You can buy some pretty bizarre ingredients, but that's yes. a good rule. Yeah. But if you eat I mean, what, if you can't, you if you need a chemist to make it, uh-huh. you know, then maybe Think it's not so healthy. Yeah. But it, that's one of the things that has been fascinating to me about switching to real food is that you don't, you're full. Like it, you don't overeat because your body, it sends natural signals going, oh, I've had enough sugar. I've had enough fat versus yeah. if you make it without that stuff, your body's like, I need more. I need more. I need more. Yeah. There's some pretty interesting um, I don't know who puts them out, but yeah, it's pretty interesting information about like if you're crazy craving salt, then you know you're low on this nutrient. If you're craving sugar, sweets, you're low on like right. your body's. Those are signals, right? Yeah, chocolate cravings <laughs> are often a symptom of magnesium deficiency, and there's all kinds of random stuff like that. So hopefully, you know, as we're talking about this, it is hard to surrender to the way God made our bodies. I can't tell you how much. There are times when I'm like, I really would love if I could just sleep for six hours and feel awesome or whatever. And and just eat the cheapest food in the grocery store because what that'd be great for our budget. It'd be easy because it'd all be frozen food or box food or whatever. Right. You know, it takes a lot of work. Never accept the the default of the culture without scrutiny. The self-examined life, the scrutinized life is what we want to do because that's how we find the truth. And that's how we honor God, too. He's the God of truth. Yeah. He's the God of wisdom and understanding. And we don't have to just wonder if we're supposed to eat ramen noodles every meal of the day. 
we can find out if that's a good idea or not. <laughs> you know, it's, it's knowable. Yes. Yeah. I and mean, that was one of the things that we started praying. And, you know, when we were making changes to our diet, it wasn't like we did everything all at once. But it's definitely been a like, okay, this Lord, is... show us your way for health. Yeah. It's probably a 10 or 12, 13 year process, I would imagine. I yeah. mean, even before we started having children, we started thinking about some of this stuff. Yeah. Anyway, we could talk about this all day. We could, but we should be done. Yeah. So hopefully that gives you some things to think about. And one thing I would really encourage is just pray for the Lord to show you where you're not in line with his design for health because he has a design for health. And when we surrender to it, things will work better than when we're not surrendered. Yeah, he made your body. He's got the instruction manual memorized and he's ready to, <laughs> you know, Whip it give out. out that information. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a big mystery. We love you guys and we are praying for you. Come back tomorrow and we're going to talk about being centered and health. Thanks to everybody that's been sharing. We really appreciate it. If you have found this podcast helpful, please do continue to share it with your friends. Send us a message on Facebook or on Twitter if you got any comments or questions. We'd love to hear from you. And we will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.